Okay, it is now Saturday afternoon, October the 19th, 2013. And, uh, let's see. Greetings, everyone. My name is James P. Madonna. This is Progressive Discussions, coming to you from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in uh, Northeastern New Jersey. And uh, I will formally uh, pipe aboard my co host and mentor. Aboard our uh, liberal progressive starship. Arr! Welcome aboard the one and only the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, uh, the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. What's going on, sir? Not much. Okay. Believe me, at home, the family often loses things constantly. The oldest matriarch of the family, which is not me, is always misplacing things. And when they misplace them, what do I hear? Jim! Jim! I can't find this. Jim, I can't find that. Jim. Out of sight, out of mind. Exactly. Out of sight, out of mind. Like your thumb drive being in my glove compartment. <laughs> That's why I need a, re a reminder. Um, anyway, I'm going to start off with... I've showed this before, but I get a kick out of it, even though I know what it is. You get a serious letter in the, in the mail. It looks like a a serious government check. You see the, the Statue of Liberty with the same colors as a government check and then lo and behold you take it out oh the average person would say wow look at this Statue of Liberty it's a government check and then you open it up <laughs> and lo and behold it's from a car dealer <laughs> saying that uh, I have been pre-qualified for financing mm -hmm. This is, something. this is, yeah, right, uh, this one is, um, what? I was supposed to get progressive eyeglasses, I didn't get it, because my coverage did not refuse to pay for it. What, is, what sum is that? Thank you, uh, uh, Chris Christie, government. $29,995, zero cents. Yeah. Now, a lot of, a lot of momos See, out that'll there. That'll get you the new uh, Mercedes CLA. A lot of momos out there would take this seriously. But what I'm trying to say is retail in the United States of America would... There's no telling how low they would stoop in advertising, and 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 uh, they're getting more and more underhanded. You know, there was a time where serious letters that look serious were serious and important, but now the scammers are contacting our cell phones and they're sending letters that look like government checks. Yep, yep. Hey, that reminds me. It's all part of deregulation, uh, pro uh, possibly. They were, mind you. Absolutely. That reminds me, now I can call up the do not call list. Since the shutdown is over. The do not call list. For your cell phone. The do not call list was never 100% perfect. That's but all it, we but, have. But it's for all five we, years. It's all we have. Yeah. You're right. Okay, in 1952. All federal revenue in the United States from large corporations was 32 percent. Today it's less than 10 percent. I think it's seven. If they pay it, 
instead of all the loopholes. Mm. Oh, yeah? They're like 60% of all corporations do not pay any taxes. Well, 60%. Like General Electric? Like General Electric. So the accurate figure is most likely less than 10%. Yeah. Interesting. There are, and I got some interesting things to read here. There are 1,500 newspapers, newspapers, 1,100 magazines, 9,000 radio stations, 1,500 TV stations, 2,400 publishers, and they're all owned by only six corporations. Yeah, bingo. So, you nincompoop lemming teabaggers that believe what you hear in the mainstream media, especially the insane asylum known as Fox News. Bullshit Mountain, as John Stewart calls it. Bullshit Mountain. Yeah. Uh, instead of Space Mountain. Bullshit Mountain. Oh, that's pretty clever. They're owned by Lock, Stock, and Barrel by six corporations. Mm -hmm. Back in the 80s, it was more like 50 or 60. So now you know why uh, you receive all this misinformation from the U.S. mainstream media. Oh, interesting. Again, according <clears throat> to the United States Office of Management and Budget, in 1950, corporations paid $3 in taxes for every dollar paid by a worker. Working stiff, schmuck. Yeah. Now it's 22 cents for every dollar. America is not broke. America is being robbed by the corporations. Yes. Ronald Reagan first one to redistribute. You know what I mean? Make the uh, make the populace, the middle class and the poor pay that which he cut for the rich. Oh, yeah. Had to be made up, you know. Had to come out revenue neutral. Revenue neutral. But how come, that part, how come that part of American history is never ever mentioned or, or known by the, the lemmings, the teabaggers? Ah, uh, because the teabaggers are prevented from this knowledge. Because Fox will never never mention that Ronald Reagan did this. No, uh, Fox uh, said that uh, uh, Obama shut down the government. Yeah, well, people like all Republicans, like let's take uh, balloon boy uh, Chris Krispy Kreme Christie. He, you know, he'll say that uh, uh, the Democrats or the Obama administration uh, are 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 raising your taxes, tax and spend, liberals tax and spend. Meanwhile. The taxes are raised on the middle class. The rich are not paying their, their fair share or no, any. Christie uh, Christi, uh, cut them. Right. So yeah. so it's yes. Rich. Yes, it's the middle class that are paying the tax burden. But it's not the Democrats who made the middle class pay the tax burden. But they make it sound like it's the man in the White House. Oh, you know, he's he, it's his fault. The Democrats raise your taxes. We gotta cut taxes. Yeah, we gotta cut taxes on the middle class. That's true. But we also have to make the rich pay taxes, their fair share. And that's what Barbara Bono was saying in the debate, mm -hmm. which she did very well. And We I don't know, have a deficit, a, a spending problem. We have a revenue problem. We have a revenue pro problem. That's correct. You know, and I wanna, even though he is a tad bit on the corporate side. He's the lesser of the two evils, but I want to congratulate uh, uh, Mayor of Newark, New Jersey, Cory Booker, for defeating uh, Steve Lonigan, that scumbag, winning the election. Now, I, first of all, aside from, I mean, we know that this special election costs a bundle of money. Yeah. Now, since <laughs> Frank Lautenberg, God rest his soul, passed away, you have to re replace Frank Lautenberg's seat in the Senate. Now, since the people voted for a Democrat in Frank Lautenberg, doesn't it make sense to replace 
automatically replace Frank Lautenberg's seat with another Democrat? Since the people... That's how it should be done. Since the people automatically voted for Frank Lautenberg, who was a Democrat, then the, then the seat should be Democratic when somebody dies. To fill out the term. Yes, to fill out the term. Right. And then if you want to run again, fine. But this special election sounds like a way of sticking another Republican in the Senate. This special election. Well, the special election was done because Mr. Christie did not want Cory Booker on his same ballot in November because of Cory Booker's high profile. High profile? People would have gone in there, vote for Cory, and go right down the Democratic line. You know what's going to happen? Mr. Christie all together. You know, you know what's going to happen? Cory Booker, being that he's an outstanding public speaker and a Democrat, is going to campaign for Barbara Bono. And uh, what's going to happen is just what Dr. Bill said. He's got the charisma. They're going to see Cory Booker's name. And they're going to go straight down the line. And everybody who's Democrat, like Cory Booker, is going to get the vote. Too bad, Krispy Kreme Christie. Yeah, but Good. Christie's got a big lead. Good riddance to bad rubbish. Well, if Christie's got a big lead, it's only because there are many idiot, stupid assholes in the state of New Jersey. Who believe he's a big bear, a gentle bear. He's got, he, he, he's, um, he's a cuddly, like my yeah. mother said, he's like, he's like a big cuddly teddy bear. Yeah. And he's cute in his own fat, chubby little way. chubsy ebsy And uh, people enjoy his antics when he speaks, he's entertaining. They they like him when they, he's they on. I think he's being truthful when he when he blasts somebody. No, well, he's definitely he lies all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, he he lies all the time. Uh, uh, um, and uh, you know, like Barbara Bono says, he may be great on late night TV, but not for New Jersey. Oh, well. Good luck. Yeah, he's going to need it. She. She. Yeah, isn't it funny how the forces of evil always have a head start? Always oh, yeah, have the lie is halfway around the world before the truth puts on its pants. Very, very profound. Yeah, yeah, people, people will get exactly the kind of government that they deserve. I believe Grover Cleveland said that. And uh, there's plenty of I mean, it's a known fact that America is the laughing stock of the world. Uh -huh. um, it certainly is now. I mean, uh, Donald Trump said it on David Letterman, uh, you know, when he travels abroad. People are always busting his chops about Americans. You know, now more than ever, after the shutdown and uh, mm -hmm. all the crap that's going on. Hey, the uh, Prime Minister or President of uh, Norway I was reading, he solved their um, economic problem. He just simply puts the tax burden on the rich and, and, and taxes the oil companies heavily, which is the same as taxing well, the rich. It has its own co uh, oil company. Oh, yeah? Yeah. The uh, Norway, uh, Norway has a tax of 50%, but everybody is protected from ca cradle to grave. You know, with health insurance yeah. and pensions, Edu education, and all the education, all this sort of stuff. I mean, in Norway, it's like I got five million people, I believe, and uh, it's a wonderful life there. So from there's no complaints. So from cradle to grave, if you want to um, go to the doctor or yeah. the dentist, or you need a surgery, you need surgery covered. Uh, or you need to see a specialist, or you want to go back to school as an older person. Covered. Covered, covered, covered. So it's well worth paying your taxes in Norway. I think Don't it is. Again, Norway uh, came up with Nokia. Nokia, the, the Nokia, store. Nokia, the, the uh, cell phones and everything, you know. Nokia. Uh, but the United States goes, well, yeah, we're the only innovators in the world. We're the only one. You know, yeah, yeah, and sure. we need all this rich uh, money to invest yeah, in innovation. Yeah, like, like, that, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, that, like that goofball, Larry the Cable Guy. Everything American, whether it be ideas, concepts, 
products. Everything American is, is the best in the universe, according to Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah, except then why do we have to have our shit made overseas? It's all in, in China and etc. Come on. The guy's a hypocrite. He's a corporate ass kisser That's that has that has a TV show on, I believe it's the History Channel. He wouldn't he don't I give two cents about corporations outsourcing. Could be wrong though. Our, you know, jobs. He don't care one bit. No, he's well, how getting. How can you say in America is this, that, the other thing, exceptionalism? Blah, 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 he's blah, getting. Blah. He he's a stand-up comic, who wears Whatever. the same bib overalls every day, with hardly any shirt. He's fat. He's obnoxious, and now he's got his uh, his own show, and he's getting well paid from the sponsors, I believe. <coughs> From you know whatever the cable oh, station, and he you know and to him uh, uh, America is uh, peachy keen uh, mil uh, milk and honey apple pie. I mean you know and uh, uh, America's the best. Uh, America. Sure, he's kissing the ass of the sponsors that pay him. Well, he he needs to define what he's talking about is America number one. Like I say, it, is it America that a corporation goes and outsources your jobs? And then you're going to say that America is exceptional and, and, and innovative and the best in the, in, in the world? Well, that's unpatriotic right there. Outsourcing Certainly it American is. jobs. Certainly it is. No, he's... Uh, he's if you're talking America first, you're talking America first. Okay? And but, it can't be America first if you're allowing corporations to outsource jobs. If you have set up your goddamn uh, economic system... Yeah that the private sector is going to provide jobs and survival for everyone, then you better regulate it goddamn well. Yes. Because you, because corporations must be defanged, like you said last week. Correct. Also, the rich have to be defanged. Yes. I mean, that's why our progressive income tax was put into place, was to defang them because of what has happened. Right. They understood that if you allowed them to continue taking all of their money, they would become like nations, too powerful to deal with, as they are today. The Koch brothers, Listen, I offer you don't as wait, an example. You don't wait until the termites completely destroy your home uh. before you call the exterminator. Before you the call Orkin man. the Orkin man, yeah. you don't wait that long until your the timbers in your home are all eaten up. <laughs> you know, and the same thing with putting conservatives in public office and uh, and uh, making corporate giving corporation let, letting corporations make the laws in the country. Yeah. Same thing, Alec. Same. Yeah. All another right. Another thing. Another thing. Before you go on with your uh, mm -hmm. other things. Mm -hmm. For years, decades, 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 <clears throat> the conservatives have been telling us that they want to destroy the United States government. They want to make it small enough so they can drown it in a bathtub. Mm -hmm. And and then today, when we see them try to do it, mm -hmm. we're surprised. Mm -hmm. We're surprised that they want to shut down the government, that they want to crush it, that they want to destroy it. And we're surprised. These people have been telling us what they want to do. They are unpatriotic. They are traitors. Traitors. And we ought to start calling them by name. And who was that, uh, that stupid woman the other day, where I believe you know her name, where she said, if you don't like our religions, get out of Get out of if you don't, If you don't like the idea that we're forcing our religion down your throat, leave the country. She's a blonde. She's a, an older woman, uh, attractive. Uh, I don't know her name, but she's oh, a Fox right. News broad. Oh, there you go. Bitch, witch. She's part of the conservative coven of witches, which includes uh, Michelle Bachman, Sarah Palin, uh, Ann Coulter, uh, the Medusa I call her, Ann Coulter. Uh, I don't know Christine O'Donnell. Is she relevant anymore? No. No. Uh, what's the other one? Um, there was uh, one in California, was she? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. The one in the southern states. The one in the southern states. She's a, She's the uh, governor. Well, not Jan Brewer. Yeah, or her actually, too, but Jan Brewer. No, no, it's southern states: South Carolina, North Carolina, something. something yeah, like yeah. Elmer's glue. Elmer's. Elmer's. Uh, uh, yeah. She's a congresswoman 
from uh, uh, I wish she her mouth is glued shut with Elmer's glue her last name is Elmer's uh, North Carolina or South Carolina <laughs> North Carolina whatever they're they're red states I take it right yeah that, well, that, North Carolina was coming along to becoming uh, you know having half a brain but now they're, um, it's going down they're, the tubes, you know, they, 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 But South Carolina, forget about it. South oh, Carolina oh. is still fighting the Civil War. Yeah, Fort Sumter. Uh, South Carolina believes that homelessness should be illegal and yeah. they should be arrested. And, uh, and um, I guess they're, I'm going to take a wild guess and say they're, they're pro-life, religious nuts. Yeah, pro, no, they're pro-embryo. Pro-embryo. Once the fetus is born they don't give a damn anymore well li yeah life be life begins when the first breath is taken well they say life begins at conception so therefore every time you have an ejaculation which may consist of over 200 spermatozoa only one can penetrate the ovum and they so all of those other ones you are committing murder. No, that they're, they're kamikaze pilots. You are prevent you are preventing them from getting inside an ovum and creating a child. I didn't tell them to swim. I'm sorry. I have nothing to do with them swimming and not making it. They're they're kamikaze pilots. I'm sorry. So life begins at conception. So, according you know, to them. According to them, yes. All right. Let me. I have two more things. They love the embryo that breathes like a fish. But not, a, not a, a, a human baby already born. Correct. They cut the WIC program. They cut food stamps. WIC. Yeah, wiki, wiki, wiki. Okay. Like Nucleus when they sang jam on it. Wiki, wiki, wiki. Remember the chipmunks? Yeah, they cut the WIC program. Yeah, they cut the WIC program. They cut the uh, food stamps program. They're, I think the food stamps program is almost 50% almost, uh, of the people on there are killed children. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's like something like 11 or 12 million kids uh, every day who have uh, issues with hunger. Yeah, in the United States. Do they give a crap about that? In a first world country like the United States. Exactly. And the homelessness of veterans, absolutely despicable in a country like the United States. Correct. Tea Party, morons, and, I'll, and I'm just using very mild language here for what you really are and republicans their the jobs are just not out there that's it the office jobs are in the philippines people used to say well only manufacturing is outsourced you know bangladesh china whatever no 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 the office jobs Every. they're in the philippines so customer service inbound call center that used to be in the united states Eh, they paid anywhere from like 11 to 14 dollars an hour depending on who you work for in the Philippines they pay from 50 cents to a dollar an hour mm. with really no benefits but they act like it's found money to the Philippine people yeah. I interview well, I interview well, things are relative I interview Philippine people physically via the internet Skype. Skeepy, Skype, Skeepy. Skype, and I get interviews, and a couple of them want to go live and do a show. Uh, a lot of them left their country to work. Some of them forced themselves to work in Dubai, where they have to Dubai. be treated horribly by the uh, Arab Muslims' employers, and, and there's a lot of rape going on. Mm -hmm by Arab Muslim employers in Dubai of Philippine women wow. and yeah and 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 they act like they treat them you know they act like they treat them like second or third class citizens because they're female they uh, they're, they act, they behave like absolute assholes jerks and they're doing this because like this other very important Philippine man that owns an organization told me with all the political corruption and everything, the economy is so bad in the Philippines mm. that it's a shame that Philippine talent has to work abroad, elsewhere. 
It's just yeah, because it ain't going to help their country. Now, it's, right? Yeah, it's not going to help their country. It's a tragedy, yeah. you know. But uh, he, he he agreed. It's this political corruption that is the the root of the roots all this. of all evil. Now, next, C corporate tax rate. The corporate tax rate in 1966 was 58 percent, with an unemployment of 2.6 percent. Uh huh. The corporate tax rate in 2013 is 15% with an unemployment rate at 7.1%. I think it's 7.4. All right. Tax cuts don't create jobs. Yes, this is the truth. The truth has been, it is known by few only because of this propaganda, which says that the rich are the job creators. Yeah, China. Okay. <coughs> well, they are the. See, it's the. It's that. It's that flaw, that uh, in capitalism that we keep talking about. Uh, the capitalist is the only person with the risk capital to put at risk to try to uh, innovate. But he doesn't do that. He puts it in savings. He puts it in uh, uh, investments to uh, like a hedge fund, etc., etc., etc. They don't put it so that it creates jobs. The jobs are created by small businesses of like 500 or less employees. Mm -hmm. There's where the jobs, 64% of all jobs, are created by these people, not the big corporations. Sorry. Yeah. That's the economic truth. Right. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. I agree. The next. The next and last. The middle class made less. The middle class made less last year. All right. Th this is 2013. The middle class made less last year than in 1989. Meanwhile, 400 of the wealthiest Americans, what they were worth a decade ago. Uh huh. And what did I put in the new, the, the new article in the newsletter, The War on the Poor? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, something like 1,500 and some people who make, made more than a million dollars paid no taxes. Well, how do you explain something like that? Loopholes. Loopholes. Made for them. Yeah. There's no loopholes for the middle class, is there? <laughs> well, there was something called the... Uh, Plus you have kids. What the hell? Yeah, that's exactly it. The... Uh, oh, what the hell is it? Uh, I'll think of it. In, in New Jersey, they, uh, a poor person cannot get, um, you know, a state dental coverage if uh, unless you have children yeah if you don't have a kid you don't get any dental coverage from the state so you have to go around trying to find a dentist that takes Medicaid good luck if you have Medicaid now if there, there are several Medicaid. there are several right now the policy <coughs> is that your state is going to get Medicaid and paid fully by the government for two yeah. years. Yeah. After that, yeah. you will be required to pay for 10% of the cost of Medicaid. Well, what? states like Texas and etc., they don't want this. How are you going to, if you can't find a job in this well, wonderful cool. country, how are you going to pay for the Medicaid, 10%? Who? The state's going to pay for that. The government's going to pay 90% at that but time. The state has, right now, but the state can refuse that? They are doing it. They don't want it. They don't want to help their poor. Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, South Carolina, etc., 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 etc. So they have to find a hospital. They have to continue going to the ER and find a hospital with charity care. If that is even available if, down south. If that's available <laughs> down south. I don't know. I mean, we have them. Up, I would assume it wouldn't be. We have them in the Northeast. We have plenty of them because we're densely populated, and we're the Northeast. 
We're not. And we don't in, like people going and dying on the sidewalk. Some of us. Okay. Yeah. Apparently, down south, they, they're. <laughs> this is okay. Well, you know, plus, well, the Confederate flag uh, at, at protests is okay too with the, the oh, south yeah, 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 and yeah. bigotry and, and homophobe and racism and. Uh, and impeach Obama. Religious nuts. For, for no reasons. What's the reason? Where's the high crimes and misdemeanors? What about G.W. Bush and Cheney? War crimes. They were guilty. And yet no one was calling oh, for impeachment. President Obama did nothing, I repeat, nothing that is impeachable. Yeah. Nothing. Exactly. But there you got these signs and uh, these uh, idiots on Facebook. Impeach Obama. Yeah, they're blaming Obama. Hey, don't, don't get me wrong. I didn't vote for Obama. You know what I mean? I'm not kissing his ass here. I'm just stating a fact. Are you voting for an independent? Me. That's who I voted oh, that's for. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. Reverend Bill ran for president for the third time. Oh, God. Oh. As, as a progressive independent. So when I defend Obama, it's, it's objective. You know? Well, we have to... Um, um, we have to tell the truth, and the truth happens to be, besides uh, the Republicans only wanting their agenda of power and greed, and, and, and that's all that's what they want, the corporate plutocracy. Besides that, they just don't want the black man in the White House. <laughs> <coughs> and well, that's it's it, not basically. racism. Hmm? Black woman called up Ed Schultz show the other day said she don't like Obama and Obamacare, but it's not racism because I'm black. Is she well off, this woman who called her? Ed I Schultz? don't know that. But she she, she don't black. like Obamacare. She must have a pretty good health insurance plan covering her ass. Probably. You know, for, for, for a person, a minority, a woman of color to be anti-Obamacare, she must have money. Or totally confused. Well, that's downright stupid. Ooh, I mean, it's so simple. It's so simple. If people make more money, they should pay more in taxes. If people are poor, they should be helped by the taxes you collect from the rich. It's very, it's not rocket science. That's called a workable, sustainable economy. Yeah. We once had that in this country. And you don't piss away trillions on the military and, and on unnecessary wars uh, you know that's a subject for another day that's a whole sakes. whole nother talk show could write 90 books on yeah. that now I was gonna go on and on about a subject that I think I'm gonna hold off for Bill Morrow because I only have two things to bring up with Billy Morrow so I'm gonna wait until Morrow's on it has to do with the sad truth about the pet trade <sighs> people purchasing animals it, it doesn't have to be dogs and cats it could be birds it could be it could be exotic pets it could be simple things but I think it, I read somewhere the it, other day but who, who really well the people get screwed and the poor animals also yes, get screwed. Yes I think I read something the other day or saw something the other day that a, either a bunch of animals or something uh, died in transit. Now Bill's gonna get he, he thinks like us. We're animal lovers and so is Bill Morrow. So he, he's going to get irate with us. Well, let's save that and let us, maybe we have time for two or three articles, readings. We don't know. Let's sink our teeth <coughs> into these readings. And you did not find the little one no, that... No, I didn't. Uh, maybe no it's, idea where maybe it went. Got I know it was right on top. Right on top. Well, during break, I will look around. Well, I'm looking on the floor and I don't see nothing. If it was that small, it was only about that big. Yeah, you know, that's I, pretty small. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Anyway. U.S. Senator Ted Cruz, Republican of Texas, can't stand him already. Has been a senator for only ten months. Ten months too long. Talk about the tail wagging the dog. For his shenanigans, such as reading green eggs and ham. Oh, on the Senate floor, oh, he's the guy that did that. He should be made to sit in the corner wearing a dunce cap, while the rest of the Senate is in session for the remainder of his term. 
That's a good idea. I like. He has it. nothing better. I like to do. it. He has nothing better to do than to read Doctor Seuss. When I was his filibuster, he's trying to stop Obamacare. He's trying to defend. He's nope. trying. He's trying to stop this train wreck. No positive productivity coming out of the Republicans. In he's Washington. not there for that. The Tea Party is not there for that. They're there they are for not there to govern. They are not there for positive whatever. They're there to sabotage. Sabotage and obstruct. That's correct. Mm -hmm. That's all they know. That's all they're there for. The government is too big and they don't like it and they want to destroy it and they want to make it small enough so they can drown it in the bathtub. Well, they also want to drown the poor in the bathtub too. Well, that's going to go then. That's what they want. They want those cuts. When they when they ask for cuts, it's always those programs. It's never the military. It's never the grants and subsidies to big oil. It's always those programs that help the poor. Mm -hmm. Bingo. The rich, as the Bible says, Psalm ten two and nine, the rich had the poor in their sights. Okay, it seems like it. I want to thank Senator Bernie Sanders of, yeah, Bernie! of Vermont, Independent of Vermont, for uh, 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 some of the information that I read at the beginning of the show. Thank you, and I salute you, Senator Bernie Sanders. Salute. Skull. Yeah, it's a great man. Well, no strawberry. Well, yeah, well, if you're drinking vodka, I guess. Of course he's popular among the Tea Party crowd. But they are a micro-minority and cannot be allowed to infest the Republican Party. They have accomplished nothing. They have only stamped their feet in anger over something that was not going to be reversed, much like someone might stamp his feet in anger after a game-winning touchdown against his team that should have been nullified over a holding that was not called. You can stamp your feet and scream all you want, and you may get a crowd cheering you, mm -hmm. but the bottom line is you have to move on. Cruz had to move on, and now, because of his antics, he should move on. He has only succeeded in diminishing his party in the eyes of the country and diminishing the United States in the eyes of the world. And the worst part is, he doesn't seem to care. Mm -mm. Cruz and Senator Mike Lee, Republican of Utah, are still saying that the fight over the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, is an over. Cruz is a fraud and a clown. We need competent, bipartisan leadership that can come to an agreement on a budget. It's not going to work. Bipartisanship is not going to work. You hear that, Democrats? Not with the Tea Party. You can't negotiate with terrorists, you can't negotiate with criminals, and you can't negotiate with Republicans. People hold your nation hostage. So give it up, the bipartisanship dream, the pipe dream. Agreement on the budget, on the tax code, entitlements, spending, reducing the federal debt, regaining some of the confidence and confidence that the rest of the world, even our enemies, used to have in us. And that is not going to come from people like Senator Ted Cruz. Not to be confused with actor Tom Cruise. Well, no, their names are not even spelled the same. Although Ted Cruz should gather up all the other Republicans in Washington and go on a very long cruise to possibly... To Gilligan's Island. To Antarctica. No, yeah, Gilligan's Island. So they'll never find their way home. After yeah. how many seasons? And, and, they, and they'll make yeah. a radio. They might get... They don't... Well, they don't have the intelligence to make a radio out of coconuts, right? No, and don't, uh, don't allow uh, those two chicks to go there either with them. Because then they'll reproduce. Yeah. What was it? Marianne and... Marianne and Ginger. Ginger. Well, we, yeah. don't want, we don't want Republicans to reproduce. Oh, no. 
Heaven no, forbid. unless they uh, uh, unless they have uh, relations with a chimpanzee or something, you know. Yeah, they didn't Ronald Reagan's kids turn out liberal. One. One did. Yeah, he's got a show in uh, California. No, oh. good for him. All of the congressmen who were bold enough to hold down town hall meetings during the summer recess were told by the people that they were opposed to Obamacare and continued deficit spending. And what happened? The alleged representatives in Congress returned and voted to keep spending and increasing the deficit. Mortgaging your children, by the way, the deficit has gone down by 50%. It has? It has, yes. 50 you don't hear that much, do you? 50%? Yeah. I, this is the first time I'm hearing it. See? 50% See? since Obama took office? Correct. That's a lot. Yeah, of course it's a lot. Ugh. It was well over a trillion and, and, and two, I think it was. Well, but this, is, two. this was the doing of Barack Obama, not, not the Republican Congress. And it would have been more right, and I mean, better if, the, you know, it would have been handled even better with the stimuluses going to the right people and etc. You know, yeah, but we, who knows? We don't want to balance the budget on the backs of, like Bernie Sanders says, on the backs of uh, the poor and the middle class. They do it all the time. They do it all the time. Yeah, and they never buy. They never balance it on the back of Exxon Mobil, do they? That was. That's their buddy. They're already complaining now in the sequester that has cut the military by a little bit. They're complaining. Well, if, oh they're, my compla God. if they're complaining, that that must mean uh, less payoffs for the Republicans, less <laughs> money in their pocket. <laughs> That's probably what they're complaining about. Could you? Could you? You know, it's <laughs> it's very difficult for me to to envision in my mind human beings that selfish and greedy. Ooh, but they are. That selfish and, oh my God. Like, hey. They don't care if children go hungry. They don't care if, if the planet, uh, United States becomes uh, polluted. They don't care about anything. Rand Paul, Paul Ryan. Their, 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 their icon was Ayn Rand, and that's exactly what she you mean, preached. You mean the uh, the ultimate dragon lady? Yes, that's exactly Ayn what Rand. she preached. Objectivism, no altruism. <laughs> Love is crap. <laughs> I tell you, I have a theory. Did anybody? Did she have a, a man in her life, Ayn Rand? Or? Uh, she, yes, she, she, uh... Poor guy. She liked, uh, uh, a serial killer. She did? Yes, she did. Uh, this she is appreciated him, uh, she said, because he didn't give a damn about anything, about blah, 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 blah. Free! Is, he was free! And this is the woman that, That's the one that they're mother. idolizing? She, exactly. Exactly. Well, then they are the, the, the soldiers of Satan, then. No kidding! No, I was right. <laughs> but they got their people protecting them, because their people will not... They ever they don't ask the questions. They don't ask whether, hey, maybe I better examine this religion crap that I believe in. You know, you know some maybe it's like someone uh, Facebook the other day put up something on uh, Christmas. What I said mean? it's pagan. Not only is it not only is it pagan, but they're 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 advertising Christmas in the summertime. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we've got to get the people into the store. I want to get the people into the retail yeah, stores. Yeah. Bye, 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 bye. Oh, by the way, I got some information. I have to watch the video, but uh, uh, I told you that uh, um, not too long ago uh, we have entered, the universe has entered the age of Aquarius, for you astrologers out there. Um, and uh, December 3rd, 2013, um, the planet Earth will be uh, bathed in some kind of a crystal clear blue energy and we crystal blue persuasion yeah like the song crystal blue tommy persuasion james and the Sh Sh Shandels or whatever Shandels. tommy james and the uh Shandels. Shandels, yeah. Shandels. yeah uh we are humans will be able to uh be in tune more much more easily with the fifth dimension now, i'm not talking about the group marilyn mccoo no yeah not marilyn mccoo <laughs> No, I'm serious. Like, like uh, people will become more psychic. Their their ESP, everything. You know, 
So I'm going to take my, uh, I'm going to borrow the, the, the Wizard Ozzy Buko's crystal ball on December 3rd and start practicing. Oh, yeah, we're going to be, uh, all right. Oh, what do we got? Let me finish up here because. Yeah, oh, yeah, fi right. yeah, finish this up because. The alleged representatives in Congress returned and voted to keep spending and increasing the deficit. Mortgaging, mortgaging your children and grandchildren's future and exempting themselves and other groups from the Health Care Act. People are starting to realize that the act is really the unaffordable care act. The average family is not saving the 2500 a year as promised by President Obama. Some have demonized the Tea Party congressmen, but they were voting for what their constituents told them to do instead of for the party leaders who are interested only in buying votes with our money. Imagine being called an obstructionist because you are doing what your constituents wanted you to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The answer is simple. Clean out Washington in the next election and replace all of them. Don't be fooled just because you know them. They represent the Washington elite and not you. Forget your party affiliation and vote for those who will represent you and not their party. Well, now this guy, he's cognizant dissonance to what you were talking about before. Cognitive because dissonance. Because here he is, he's, he's saying that his, the Tea Party was doing what the constituents wanted. When he went, now he wants everybody out. What the hell? <laughs> you know? Oh, man. You know, I... I Every day I say we're living in bizarro world. You know what's what's up is down. What's right is wrong. What's left is right. Uh, you know it's and like we're eating green eggs and ham. Yeah, and and maybe soylent green in the near future. Ooh, very yeah, now, in the future. All right, now it's time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight, known as lunch, and we'll be back with William H. Morrow the third, and. Uh, I could feel that Be Beelzebub is breathing down. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> and we are waiting for our voiceover specialist, voiceover artist, William H. Morrow III. And, uh, enjoying your lunch? Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's a little dry here. Yeah, I noticed. I got juice on it. I could tell. I could tell. What is Ooh, it? What is it? To swallow. Pork loin. Mm -hmm. Pork uh, choppy. Pork choppy. Ah, you know what? The I potato got, salad. I got a little time for uh, just to do a quick promo. We have been selling this product from the uh, Mega Life Twenty One. Uh, hard-hitting internet talk radio station, progressive station, which is at the top of newslettercensored.com. It is a very old, actually ancient, time-proven uh, tonic or tonics from, from Asia, from China. Uh, it is ginseng and royal jelly. Uh, not just any ginseng, but liquid Panax red ginseng with royal jelly, mega dose, in 30 liquid vials, one per day. Okay, and it comes in this beautiful uh, red and gold box. And it, it is two of the oldest time proven health tonics known to man. Uh, overall health tonics, adaptogens, great for uh, mental alertness hormonal balance, um, energy, and uh, as well as uh, immune system and nutritional support. So get your month supply now. Just scroll down to the bottom of our internet talk radio station and you will see the PayPal certified symbol and the drop down menu to order it along with the website personal trainer okay definitely definitely works it's great for older men and women athletes people on the go and people that are under stress red panax liquid ginseng and 
royal jelly extract the number one bee product from the hive get it now okay William H. Morrow the third should be call it. now actually We're right now yeah <clears throat> He should be calling any second. Unless he has been way late. No, no, he's he's usually he's usually a tad bit too punctual, yeah. to be honest with you. I'm pu I'm punctual, but I'm not that bad. Greetings! Hello, Jimmy, Dr. Bill. How are you? Hey. Hey, William H. Morrow the third. How you doing? How's everyone? All right. What's up, guys? Good, good, good. Not bad. Where, where is your location this week? Oh, I'm still home. I haven't gone away like six weeks. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're still... It's nice to say. Yeah, you the economy a little bit. I watch a little bit. So. That is nice true. Stay home for a change. Yeah, well, you know, there's a lot to be to be accomplished in the office. You know, you, you could do Sorry. conference... You could do conference calls online, you know, uh, uh, through Skype, and uh, there's a lot of things that could be done in the office at the home headquarters. That's now, I know you have something special to say about our newsletter founded in 1977. I do. Newsletter censored. There yep. we have it, James. Yes, the very, be very best way to join our organization. And may I say, William, that you are coming across loud and clear this week. I can hear you a lot better too. I'm wondering what's uh, good. I don't know. I, I know. I know. Wireless connections have a lot to do with the weather, so maybe it's it's ideal situation here. Yeah, this is fun right now. So um, very good. Okay. Well, we can, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, ha Halloween, Halloweeny is definitely in the air. Yeah, well, that's every day if you look around. There's an old, lights. there's an old limerick that I learned when I was uh, in high school from my mother's boyfriend back then. It, it goes like this: When the weather is hot and sticky, that's no time for Duncan Dicky. Mm. But when the frost is on the pumpkin, that's the time for Dicky Duncan. Did you know how much people? they spend on Halloween every year. I had no idea. A lot. Well, take a while, guys. Let's see if you guys are close. Let's see. How much is spent in the United States on Halloween every year? It's definitely in the millions. Okay. Hey, what do you say, Dr. Bill? Five, six million. Five or six, he said. Million? Billion? 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 Close. Close. Yeah. Seven billion dollars. Ah. Holy mackerel. Seven I billion. I never have guessed that high. Seven billion dollars spent on Halloween alone. Seven billion dollars on 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 a holiday that's really not a, per, a holiday per se. It's that's right. It's amazing. It's, 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 no, I think it's mainly because it's a it's a fun holiday. It's well, fun. Not all of the art, but it's just more fun, relaxing. It's you know, it's the only commercial aspect basically is maybe some decorations and your candy for the kids. I think people, I think people go out of their way on all fun holidays like New Year's Eve and uh, you know Fourth uh, 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 of July and uh, Memorial Day weekend. They, they 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 like to party on those days. They do. I, I would like to see the figures how they are being affected by this. Mm -hmm. Well, oh. they can say the recession is over. I still think it is a recession, but let's just go for, for argument's sake for recession. Things are rough for everybody, so I would like to see how figures have changed from years back. Yeah, Spending yeah, definitely. Well, we I really would like to see what's happened. There. We we went over a lot of pretty hard hitting uh, information at the beginning of the show, but I have two things written down that I I, I spoke to you about during the week, uh, William. Uh, and then I want to go. I want to bring up a subject that's near and dear to my heart. That is is really upsets me. Uh, you know. Um, it's consumer related but it's it's much deeper than consumer related but let me just go through these two things um, alright number one each each Latin American country has a separate parade plus they have a combined Hispanic parade in New York City right. and everybody and I mean everybody the gays 
have their parade. Everyone has their special parade in the major cities, particularly New York. Where is the European Pride Parade? Well, you're right. I don't know unless it's somewhere in Europe. I doubt if it is. Yep. You know, I don't think there is a European Pride Day Parade, per se. No, because the whites... The Italians over here, you have the Sagittarius Feast. It's not a parade. No, no. But you have certain uh, events they have, some of them, not all. Yeah, but when, when you... Different. When the Italians celebrate Columbus Day, they get a lot of heat for that. They get a lot of criticism for that. So, so white people can't really have a parade without getting criticized. Well, that's the way we become savage. We're thin-skinned about every little thing you do nowadays. And spineless. And I'm not going to harp on about just mention Washington Redskins. Okay, so. Washington Redskins. Nowadays, yeah, they want them to change the name because you see Redskins is offensive to the American Indian. But it's tradition. Uh, the 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 Washington Redskins people people grew up with that. Over 80 years old. Yeah, the the Cleveland Indians people grew up with that. The Chicago Blackhawks uh, have the Indian on hockey. On decades of tradition, I can't see why they're complaining now. And, uh, uh, there's a if you go to a store, there's a chewing tobacco. It's been around a long time with an Indian face on it and we're head. Red man. Well, red, red man. Why red man no chewing the back of their name? Yeah, I mean, uh, not mentioned at all. I mean, why not complain? Let's go, let's go to the, run the gamut, people. If you're going to be fair about your complaints, make it across the board. I mean, what what's yeah. next? The Atlanta Braves or? Mm. Probably. I'm sure they've had complaints. I think they have. See, once you give in to a lobbying group, it doesn't stop there. It, go, uh, it goes on and on. And they, and they always... It's a power thing. They try to see how much more power they can uh, uh, right. amass. Right. realize that see if we complain enough, and they'll listen to us. The bottom line is, really, people should pay any attention to us. They want to complain about the name. That's fine. Yeah, the media gives them so much face time. Don't no, say we're sorry. Feel so bad. Okay. Next question, people. Well, you know, just continue on is what they need to. Yeah. Just go with what we've heard you your complaint. Thank you. Yes. You know. Um, Don't do them justice by cutting heads with. I don't yeah. see what they're offended about. I just don't get it myself. Well, if it's if it's not important, they they really shouldn't give them any more publicity. Well, it's not offensive to begin with. It's honoring their their tribal histories, and their Indian heritage. Uh, nothing offensive there whatsoever. Right. Uh, they're just. I don't mean this to sound funny either. Point to, but they're just blowing smoke. Let's be honest. Yeah. No you pun. Know? No pun intended. But I no, mean. No uh, pun intended whatsoever. I get a I mean, I'm 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 a hundred percent. I've always been behind indigenous people throughout the world, yes. but yes. but 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 come on! I mean, I mean, is it really is it really offensive enough to destroy a, a, a tradition in in, in uh, professional sports? I mean, no, not even college sports. That's why you've got to remember too. The Stanford or the Stan Stanford Indians. Mm -hmm. Stanford University they changed their name to the Cardinal because of complaints. Yeah, you can't you can't call a team the the Stanford Indigenous Native Americans. It doesn't it doesn't sound right. It, it's too exactly. long. If you need something that How come the condom uh, uh, manufacturers are not upset with the Trojans? Yeah, yeah what does that have to do with the Trojan? Oh yeah, uh, Bill mentioned the uh, the Trojan condoms. How how come? No, condom manufacturers. Condom manufacturer. Why aren't they upset? The I know. With the Trojans. They, yeah. So what are they in California or something? The Trojans? You're going to send somebody somewhere yeah. every time. What do they use? Sausage like said, casing during the Trojan of ancient Greece? I don't know what it means. What does it feel like to be offended? I've never been offended. Yeah, people, people, people are walking on eggshells today. It's, but not, not the conservatives. They say what they want, which I admire them for that. But liberals are walking on eggshells. They're so afraid of offending people. You see anything during an interview or on TV, and they rip you to shreds, and then this and that. It was offensive to the. You can't really open your mouth much anymore. Hey, li listen, Jimmy the Greek Snyder got fired for for stating a true fact of history. They did selective breeding. Not only with animals, but with slaves. Jimmy well, the Greek also, was right. He also paid them a tremendous compliment. He said they're, the blacks are born with a certain tendon or ligament in the back of their foot or heel, which makes them 
go run and jump and better athletes. What the hell is that a put down? It's a sign. Don't see what he said that was wrong. It's a scientific fact. Selective breeding works. Yeah, I don't understand why the head your CBS did not stand behind him one bit. He was fired right away. Yeah, he's fired right away. Well, you know, they butchered corporate yeah. whores and uh, they want they're sucking up to uh they're they're afraid they're gonna lose a certain segment of the population as customers, maybe. Yeah, uh, they're really not going to, maybe for sure a while, but yeah. it's gonna be a small segment and the people like they say People yeah, have yeah, pe too. people have their own lives. They they're not gonna harp and, and dwell on the silly little things like this. No, I mean you have better things to do than worry about teams nickname. Right, exactly. Especially one that is not hurting anyone. No, not at all. Now let yeah. me go on to the next. Um, all right. I, and and, and it's kind of related. It's kind of related to people being so touchy and paranoid and thin-skinned. Uh, when you're, and this is a social statement that me and Bill Morrow went over. When you're nice to, when you're nice to a woman today, and you give her compliments, they become very suspicious. When you're not nice to them, you you are the bad boy. They'll complain about you, but they're more attracted to the man. Now, there's a lot of craziness going on in today's society. Well, you also get a lot of women that fall in love with uh, murderers on death row, too. Mm -hmm. Which is just to say, it's, that's just very odd. Uh, people don't make sense in their thinking what they fall for. Right. And it does relate back to what you were speaking about earlier, too. Jimmy, you can open your mouth sometimes. It could be sexual harassment in today's world because you look very nice today. Right. I mean, again, you can't open your mouth, you can't compliment a woman anymore. Nope. You can't, you, know? you, you can't ask a woman out on the job either. That, they, could, they can call that sexual harassment. Oh, I know, I know. And they're even starting to pick more and more out on the way people are dressing at work, too, especially women that they're dressing provocatively, they like to call it that. Well, if they're provocative, they're not following a, the company dress code, as far as I'm concerned. That's right. Well, a lot of companies don't have a dress code, but they just tell you you have to dress nicely and then blah, 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 you know, stuff. Yeah. Man, and, uh, Casual uh, Friday. You have to wear red socks. It's crazy. I don't know. It, yeah. Well, if it's a Republican, they make you wear red ties. It's somebody pitching all the time. Yeah. Lapel pin. Like people love to complain to wine. That's well, true. You look at manners in the country, how they decayed a little bit. You say hi to some people. You walk by, you hold the door. Sometimes you don't even get a thank you. No, I don't, get th I don't get thank yous when I hold doors in my area. I have people no. that walk by my house walking their dog and then they won't present a greeting or make eye contact if I say hello, hi, you know, hi, good I afternoon know, or I something. Know. They think somebody, everybody that says hello is not the rape, and that's just <laughs> not true. Yeah, it's like so much paranoia, my God. There's a lot of paranoia and I think it's getting worse. So you know, and, and, and it's so bad, if you ride a New York subway, no one ever makes conversation on a New York City subway. Or eye contact. No eye contact oh, either. Oh, don't dare look at each other in the eye. I mean, that's ridiculous. Mm. I don't know why. Again, a reverse. I'm afraid. To playing ostrich. People play yeah. ostrich about everything that's going on in today's society, with the government, with everything. People are afraid to express how they feel. They are. You know. They are and very. They're, it's, it's odd what things have become, and I don't know why they have become this way. I have no I idea. Don't know why. I have the only thing I can think the end of times? Well, there is stress in society. Maybe it's well, to the Timothy? legal system and the lawyers have allowed these law frivolous lawsuits like this to go on into the courts. Without oh yeah, why do the he said something to me, he said I look nice. Why do the that's a compliment. Why do the judges give in to this frivolous crap, these frivolous lawsuits? And you wonder why the court system is backed up. Because there's so many frivolous ones they can just sit up. Ridiculous! It it, it's a waste of it it's a waste of court time and money. And money. Don't give it crazy. Don't give it crazy. Okay, I'm going to get on to the final subject, and right. I know you two, you two gentlemen, um, would find it of value. Uh, and and the subject I'm going to bring up is uh, the pet trade. As of course, a, the puppy mills. Well, and not not just puppy mills in general. The it's pet trade. The, and there's t the, uh, a lot of creatures, animals, 
are sold in stores and uh, now more than ever online on the internet. And uh, what happens is you don't, you do not know if the animal was captive bred or caught in the wild, which is bad when they're caught, when they're harvested in the wild. And and you are not, you they're charging top dollar for the pet for the creature, and you receive the creature often with no health certificate. You're paying top dollar for it. There's no care sheet. There's no care information that comes with your pet. And what happens, unfortunately, often is the animal is either sick or yeah. injured. It dies on you. And when you contact the company, the company makes it like it's not our fault. Oh, when we sent you the animal, it was in perfect condition. I don't know what happened. So well, what I'm saying is the companies blame the, the customer automatically which is bad customer service, they're charging you top dollar, they're telling you, oh, you, those are the risks that you take by getting an animal, but meanwhile they charge you top dollar and, and they don't want to make good, and who suffers? The animal, yeah. the animal suffers as well as the customer. Uh, not the customer so much when it comes down to the poor little animal. I love, I'm an animal fanatic, I love animals. Right. I don't know why the government, the ASPCA and all the little investigate all of these companies. Because they, they they're mostly run by Amish. Bill? I would let, that's what they should really do their investigations of 60 minutes or whatever. And these, they have. You know, they lie to and go after these guys. Get them. You went after some of the dog fights. Yes. Which are illegal. Some of the cock fights, which are illegal. I mean, go all the puppy mills and cat mills, what have you. Now, these are wrong. do you know where they found, do you know where they found one of the primary puppy mills supplying the state of New Jersey? It, they found it where I would least expect them to find it. On an Amish farm in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Isn't that just great? The, the, the holier than thou, strictly oh, yeah. religious. God, God loving people, and this and that, we're, we're farming little animals, and we're running an animal mill. Puppy farm. Puppy, puppy mill. The, the puppies were were kept in cramped, unsanitary conditions. You know, they were. There's no excuse for that. sitting. No Sitting in their own fecal matter, and and and, and they and they uh, they were a lot of them were sick when they arrived at the pet shop uh, stores, and uh, I really took them, took them away, didn't they, from them? Who knows? Yeah, they get them. They get them cheap. Uh, they they all they care about is their bottom line with profit. They don't yeah. care about the animal. That's right. Did the government shut them down? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, the Amish guy was was screaming at the camera people to get off his his farm. Why? What are you ashamed of? Yeah, they're supposed to be so I religious. I, I was proud. I was taking, yeah. taking great care of the little animals. I should come on. They're right here in front of the medalist, so it doesn't spoil it. All bad here. Right. So it's it, funny how the guilty get angry, isn't it? Yeah, it's funny how when you catch somebody with their with, hands down. with their hands yeah. in the cookie jar, they get they get uh, upset. I, they get very angry. It's odd. I mean, that's strange. You know, you're yeah. something to hide. Right in. I know, I, I know somebody. I know somebody who placed an order, and I want to. I want to add this gentleman to the uh, our Chiseler's Hall of Shame. So this week's inductee is Ken, the Bug Guy, who sells exotic pets through the internet, uh, as well as Reptile City. They're both of them. Shame on you. And Ken, the Bug Guy, is one of those people who. Who charges top dollar for his his animals, and and then if something happens, if something goes wrong, it's all your fault. You know, he, yeah. he yeah, he would say, oh, oh, it was in perfect condition when it was uh, in my yeah. at my company, and blah 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 blah. Where is he based on? I've never heard of him. Uh, He's he? uh, a lot of them are based, um, incredibly, a lot of them are based in red states. <laughs> They're down is that south. What, is that what he's called? He's called Ken the Bug Ken Guy. Ken the Bug Guy. He sells like tarantulas and centipedes and things of that. Scorpions. Oh, I've never, heard, never heard of him. Yeah, but 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 the point is, the when he sends a baby, the baby is literally the size of of like an ant, and he claims that it's one month old, and and it's been eating great. How could it be one month old and be the size of an ant? God. No, what I'm what I'm coming down to is. What I'm getting to is, 
there seems to be a pattern today with bad customer service and disrespect for the customer today. Well, there is, yeah. 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 How, how, how could it be? It's not, it's not across the board, but a great, great perception, yes. Yeah. yeah. You know. And uh, I think it's a lot of comes down to people they're hiring sometimes. Well, this you know, is. This well, is. Don't care. You want a job so bad, you go to the interview, fill up the uh, application form. This is the owner and that's. Unfortunately, get hired. You don't, you don't do the job well. Yeah, yeah. Well, this this is the owner that had that attitude, and uh, it's like that's bad customer service. I mean, don't blame your customer off the bat. At least no. listen to the customer's complaint and and and, and have an open mind. And your your employees really should not listen to the customer's complaint too much. They should really just say, "Look, I am I I'm not allowed to argue with you, sir. Let me get a manager for you or my supervisor." Well, that I agree with. They're, you know, don't stand there and butt heads with them. Say, I'm not allowed to argue. Yeah. That's corporate policy with the end of manager. Yeah, but some, sometimes, sometimes the consumer really does get stiffed. I mean, you know, I know there's people that compl oh, yeah. I know there's right. people that complain about everything because they want everything sure. for free. But that's right. It goes both. It works both ways. I mean, you have scam artists that try to get something for free, and you have companies that scam people too. So it works on both sides of the fence. Actually, there was an there was an article. There was something on the news about the big retail chains, uh, the department stores, where they're going to put a stop to these people that tend to come in and they'll they'll buy a piece of fine jewelry and they'll they'll wear it to a special occasion, uh -huh. and, and then they bring it back and get a right. refund. And how about some of the clothing they buy and they bring it back and it even has stains, sweat stains on it? That's right. Mm. That too. That's pretty, that's pretty low, and it's not healthy. The next no, it's it's thing. it's not. Once they uh, use it, once they use it, they uh -huh. should not put it back on the rack. Once they wear right. the clothes, they, they should post it. I think most of them do now on their return policy. I'm sorry, that's our return policy. Yeah, I, I mean these people, these people buy a, an expensive designer uh, dress. Yeah. A lot of them are female. An expensive uh, designer dress. And, right. and and diamonds or whatever sapphires whatever they wear it right. to the special occasion and then try to get the money back in full I know so they no think returns it's a on sport. panties it's really not they're doing it like one okay. yeah I mean it's not so you know that's it for the day yeah well Lord and Taylor that is not fast hold on hold on Lord and Taylor is not rent a jewelry it is a business that's all that's right if you, if you did have a rental division but they don't that's what they're in business for Hey, it'd be good if they had uh, rental uh, bridal uh, gowns and things like that because it's stupid for a woman to spend eight hundred dollars on a wedding gown and then keep it in the closet for the rest yeah, of her right. life. While what men the? can rent huh? Are you kidding? Eight hundred? Eight hundred is more? Yeah. Oh, there's some of them are thousands. Oh thousands. come on! Jeez, really? Man. Dollars. Oh what? What? God. What is it with this United States uh, free enterprise? Well, why are they? Why are it's they? It's kind of a bargain in today's world. But why are they why are they price gouging everybody so much? This is insane. Well, I guess a figure, which it isn't, is a once in your lifetime thing. Please. Like, you know, beyond yeah, the mar the markup the markup on fine jewelry, the markup on, on the pets. I mean, if you want an English bulldog in New Jersey and uh -huh. New York, they want four thousand dollars for a damn English right. bulldog puppy. That's right. Why everybody That's is price. allowed to price gouge the consumer? Incredible. Crazy. Incredible. All right, fellas. All right, William. Hi, right, both of you. Dr. Bill, it's been good as always talking to both of you, fellas. Yes. Okay. Bye bye. Have a good rest of your show, and I'll talk to you later. Thank you. All right, gentlemen. Bye bye. Bye. I like I like his bye bye at the end. Bye bye. Bye bye. That's the McLaughlin report. He goes bye bye. He yeah. stole. He stole Billy's bye bye. At the end of every show, he goes bye bye. You know, uh, McLaughlin, is he still, is this still, is this show still on? Yeah. I knew, I, I worked with his son. His son yeah. was a personal trainer uh, in the, um, in the 1990s, late 1990s, early 2000s, whatever. His son was a personal trainer at Bally's Total Fitness in, on Sylvan Avenue in Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey. And I worked with him. And uh, he was a nice guy. We, 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 you know, we buddied up in uh, the McLaughlin uh, group. Yeah, and uh, and I told him, uh, yeah, I, I, I used to um, get a kick out of him. You know, the way he spoke. 
And uh, I says, how is he as, as a father? He says, hey, he's, 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 cool. he's cool. You know, he's, he's got his moments. He's got his moods. You see now, what can I tell you? <laughs> I'm a Gladwin <laughs> group. <laughs> this is the news of the week. Like, you know, start your show half crocked, you know, drunk and, uh, and uh, do what I do, you know, drink tea, except I would make a little Irish coffee, I would Irish, Irish whiskey, Irish whiskey, you know, and, uh, and just uh, be yourself, you know, I mean, be informative, but be yourself, be a, a poisonality, you know, like, uh, like the woman who can't control her tongue, Miley Cyrus, her tongue and her butt, Miley Cyrus, be a, be a poisonality. You know? I still have not seen that video. She's it's working video. She's grinding the guys. Well, I have not seen it. Schlong. Nor have I heard the stupid song. I don't pay attention to any of their stupid songs. Any of them. Yeah. That, they had that girl Selena Gomez on uh, on David Letterman, and uh, she's wearing a real hot, skimpy outfit of. Of course, they all do. Mm -hmm. You know, and. Uh, are you accusing people like Beyonce, Aguilera, Shakira, Ag Aguilera, yeah, of Shakira. wearing skimpy outfits and things? Yeah, to sell to sell their music. I see. To get people to go to their concerts, get the men, get the men to to go, you know, and spend money on um, what they do. Men do that because in the old days it was the young girls, the teeny boppers. Who bought the records, not the men. I don't know what the I don't know. configuration is today. Well, the teeny bopper people, uh, performers, you know, like your, uh, I guess your Jonas Brothers and people like that, you know, the boy bands. Boys to men. The boy bands, uh, you know, eventually. What used to be Menudo. Eventually, they get too old to be a boy band, and they're out. They lose it. Yeah, well, you know, it, the, kid, the kids go crazy for them. Hey, did, didn't the girl scream with... with Justin Bieber. Didn't the girl... Oh, that skinny Timberlake. little... That skinny little wimp. He acts like he, he's so sarcastic and smug when he's on a talk show. Well, now Justin he is Bieber. because, you know, he's hot stuff. Yeah. Hey, they did the same... The girls did the same thing with the Beatles. They cried and That's screamed. That's what I mean. Back then. You know. That's who bought the records. <laughs> <laughs> John will marry me someday. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, and, and and then they cry when when their their famous performer gets married or gets a girl. Ah, he jilted me. Okay. Yeah, but he uh, Bill's right about about a lot of tastes, uh, romantic tastes of women. Now they they'll write letters to a serial killer or a murderer in prison and. Married him in prison. Yeah, yes. there's something about something about the bad man. Bad boy, the baby. bad boy. They like the badness, but they'll they'll complain and cry the blues to everybody they know about when the they bad get hurt boy. by the bad boy. When the bad boy does them wrong, but yeah. they still love him. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing Anna Nicole. We Smith. don't know that it was love. Anna Nicole Real Smith, love. when uh, somebody asked her, <clears throat> excuse me, about the old the rich old geezer that he, she married and she goes it's not for money I love you he's only got a short time anyway come on let him, he's let only, him enjoy himself he's only an old billionaire with one foot on the banana peel how about this new uh, she's a she's a go-go dancer so that's I mean originally so that's the mentality of a go-go dancer the new television show on A&E the governor's wife he's 85 she's 34 She's got two kids of her own. Which governor? And he's got two grown kids, women, and he was in jail for and, corruption. And he became cetera. governor? And no, he was he went in jail when he was a governor. For corruption. And then he comes out and he marries her and everything. New show. This is fictitious, right? This is not a real yeah. governor. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes when you're infamous, you're a uh, uh, you're, Just as famous as you're famous. more famous as somebody who's uh, yeah. famous for positive reasons, or you know, infamy. So it will make you more money in the devil's world than 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 December seventh, than fame. Nineteen forty-one, a day that will live in infamy. 
News Bulletin. Arnold Schwarzenegger is trying to overturn the law that will prohibit a an immigrant from running for president of the United States because Arnold Schwarzenegger, he wants, to be. Schwarzenegger wants to run in 2016. First of all, we he, cannot understand him. He should hire Mildred Pena to clean the Oval Office if he gets elected. Uh, the Ma new movie... Maria Shriver won't, won't mind because she's not with him, huh? Escape. Yeah. Is with Mr. Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. You talk about uh, funny accents? Well, Stallone, I don't, that's not an I accent, understand I Stallone. Yeah, I understand Stallone. No, I understand Arnold too. You know, I, you know what? I think it's great that the guys uh, still have it in them. He ruined California. What the hell did we want him president for? I they had to so. call in Jerry Brown to straighten things out. Come I guess, on. I guess, uh, well, he's a Republican. I, I guess they like, I guess Arnold. He was supposed to be a moderate I Republican. I guess Arnold, too. good things happen to Arnold because he's Arnold. Not because not because of his merits as <laughs> governor of California. They had, a, they, had a, they had to bring Moonbeam, Jerry Brown, out of the glue factory. He came out of retirement to fix the state. How's he doing, by the way? Very well. I heard that uh, that smart movie made, uh, Legalizing Industrial Hemp, was pretty, pretty good. One of the small successes. He has others. Oh. Yeah, got the, 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 city, the state is no longer, you know, with $30 billion deficit or whatever the hell wow, it was. Wow, how about under that? Under Schwarzenegger. He's putting money back into the pocket of the little guy, I bet. And guess what? What? He raised the taxes on the rich. Uh, oh, bless his heart. Oh, God forbid. Oh, bless his heart. And what about, uh, what worries me about progressive, uh, progressive liberal people is that they're usually very soft on crime. How's he doing with the that's um, that's baloney. Sure, they are. They don't want to. Sure. They don't. They don't want to. They uh, the, the number one deterrent for heinous crimes is the death penalty, without a doubt. No. Without a doubt. It doesn't deter anybody but that particular person. The gallows. Hey, it's the same thing as I pointed out the in the new article, the war on the poor. The guillotine. In the newsletter. Mm -hmm. The project for the new American century, yeah. neocons, believe that you gotta go and you gotta war with these people and you gotta kill them and everything so they respect you. Respect you? No, the that United won't work. The United States was the strongest country in the world after World War II and guess what? What? Little countries like Korea and Vietnam, Vietnam etc., yeah. and, and, and were not afraid of the United States no. and did not respect the United States. Violence does not teach a deterrent, my friend. It makes, it makes them hate you more. That's correct. But also, uh, there were... Um, Do not, as the Bible says, return evil for evil. They, in the, as far as the modern wars that the United States was involved in, uh, there, there, were, there were monetary reasons for these wars. Well, of course. Not monetary in terms of Pentagon spending. I mean monetary, like, like oil interests, things Making of that nature. Making money for the private sector. Yeah, because... Iraq was a... Well, what do you call it? A, the great example. We got nothing out of it, but the private contractors got everything they wanted. Halliburton, KBR, they got rich, baby, mm -hmm. by not even doing the jobs that they promised to do. Like they wanted to charge, they charge a hundred dollars to wash the soldiers' clothes. They gave them dirty water, etc., etc. That's all it's about, yeah. as General Schmidley Butler said. And then, and then, War is a racket. And, and then when, uh, when the, uh, the poor destitute veterans that, let's say they live in a tent, if they want to protest in Washington, the, 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 they arrest them. That's the thanks they get for putting their lives on the line for the United States. Well, they did that back when they went to get their bonus, too, mm -hmm. in Washington. I think it was... Uh, MacArthur, yeah, and I believe Dwight was still was there too. They were, uh, you know, they were against the uh, the.
crowd of veterans coming to Washington to demonstrate that they wanted their bonus. Yeah. Now what? They were poor. Now what is the deal with Chris Christie saying that he uh, he did he he did a lot for education in New Jersey? And, and, and well, he got rid of a lot of teachers. <laughs> it's it's like nothing but positive things with Christie's campaign commercials. It doesn't. It just goes on and on. <laughs> Yeah, well, he wants, he wants like the voucher system, which you know brings us back to the days of only the rich can afford school. You know, that's what that's all about. Well, it's it, it, yeah. yeah. Only the rich, only the children of the rich will be well educated. Like it has been for like thousands of years. You know. Wow. Yeah, like the imperialism of the past. Only the rich can get the benefits of society. Whatever. Yeah. Okay, let us sink our teeth back. I need my glasses. How the hell did they did they get over I here? I put them over there. I th well, you, you 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 create more havoc. You do you do what my mother does. She moves things <laughs> instead of le instead of leaving things uh, that will be e in in areas that will be easy access. She moves things all the time, and then you have to go get them. You know, you bullying is alive and well in our country. Well, because they they have the wrong approach. They're listening to psychologists. They want you to negotiate with and use psychology. No, you you crack their freaking skull open, and that's how you make a bully stop. Hey, we're talking about the politics. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. A small group of people has just held us all hostage at the cost of untold million, no, billions, $24 billion in lost wages while they collected their salaries and touted themselves as heroes. They need their salaries, according to Congresswoman Elmers. Uh, and, 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 and about a hundred and some other ones. They need their yes, salaries. They, they need, uh, what is that, like 35 or something gave it back or something. The, the or took a deduction or something, yeah. But, but, but the, whole, the whole vast majority of them wanted their pay. But the 800,000 government workers did, did they did, they did Who not. Who cares about them? They did not need their That's paychecks at all. No, no. That's correct. Okay. Uh, we will witness this again in a few months. If something is not done to fix the democratic system that allows this to happen. Our legislators think their political agenda is more important than the good of the citizens. So they delayed taking a vote while they tried to rig things to make sure it would come out in their favor. This is not how a democracy is supposed to work. Everyone who could have made a vote happen before the government was shut down should be voted out of office. Dreamin', I'm always dreamin'. That ain't gonna happen. No. No, it's not. Mustang, Oklahoma. One man lies on his stomach on the driveway. Blood is splattered along the garage door that smashed his head and presumably killed him. How the hell did that happen? Another man lies a few feet away run over by a truck. The scene in a middle-class Oklahoma neighborhood of single-story homes and manicured lawn seems out of a horror story. Because, well, it is. The two accident victims are in fact dummies. Okay. Created as a part of a family's vivid Halloween display. Oh. To little, shock. A little, um. And frighten. A little macabre, don't you think? And it has. Macabre. At least one woman has called 911. It's too realistic of a decoration. <laughs> to report the man's head crushed by a garage door. Uh, that's, that's, 
that's uh, emergency personnel who responded discovered the dummy. Jennifer Mullins of Mustang said she got the idea for the macabre scene from a social media site and showed her husband Johnny who was happy to scare up a display while he was on workers' compensation and unable to work. Using Johnny's work clothes and blankets for stuffing, the couple first placed one life-size dummy at the garage in early October and the next day placed one next to the truck. A sign above the dummy in the garage door reads, Your neck. The front yard is filled with spider webs, skeletons, crosses, and rest in peace signs. Well, that's okay, but... Mullins knew that the ghastly display would raise some eyebrows, but she's surprised by just how much attention it's received. People think we went too far. Freaked out, you freak people out. And you know, we're devil worshippers. And we must not be Christian folk. Wait, who said this? The people. The people that did this uh, were admitted to being uh, Satan worshippers? The people who have been scared by their stuff uh, are saying they are devil worshippers and not Christians. Oh, for real? Yeah. The 32-year-old mother of two girls said... They should love it then. They've said all kinds of stuff. But we're normal. We love Jesus. We celebrate Halloween. Actually, if you love Jesus, you don't celebrate Halloween. No, okay. it's just for kicks. It's not. You don't like. You don't like. Uh, I mean, yeah. It's. It's. You don't really. You celebrate it, but not like. You well, don't I hold seven holidays only. You don't. Period. Like, it's like it's it's for fun. You don't you don't really you don't seriously celebrate Halloween like like you would do um, um, Easter or something like that. Some of the Mullins neighbors said that while the display initially created some spine-chilling moments for them, they are not opposed to it. Chris Wilson, 38, who lives a few houses down, said. He was driving by on his motor scooter when he saw what he thought was the body of his neighbor caught under the garage door. Blood trickling from his body. Trickle down economics? He grabbed his phone and ran over to the home prepared to call for help. But then he realized the body was fake, made up of cloth and blankets. He got me, Wilson said with a chuckle. I got news for you. Right here in Clifton. Same thing. A gentleman has gone overboard, so to speak. Yeah. And he has been uh, faced with a lawsuit. A lawsuit? Correct. I believe he had dummies dangling from trees or something. Yeah into the roadway and so? stuff of that nature. Well, there's a law against certain things like that. So. He is being... Uh, Something on the books of... Uh, so we have it right here. Well, no, I mean, you know, I, 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 I envision what it looks like. It's just that I didn't think that... Um, uh, I, di I didn't think that how uh, that lifelike Halloween decorations on your property was a problem. Well, I can see how people would go by and think something was happening oh, yeah, to a course. gentleman with a garage door on his squashing his head. It's that life -like. Blood trickling out. Because what will happen is somebody else would ride by and call <laughs> 911. And then somebody else would call 911. And it'll go, 911 will, will get sick and tired of getting these calls. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's just too lifelike. <laughs> You know, it's like a toy manufacturer making, uh, 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 no, making Androids. water water pistols to look exactly like oh. 
a nine millimeter Glock. I thought you were going to talk about androids with the beautiful human skin. And sex dolls? Sex dolls. Course, no, they could be realistic. That you can program to say, I love you. I want you. In other words, you got no excuses, baby. No, you would have to. When it comes to, you know, Dicky Duncan. Oh, that that would be chick talk. I, I love you. I need you. You program the android <clears throat> to talk dirty, just like a talk like, dirty to me, like a phone sex girl. <laughs> and you also program all the knowledge of the finest culinary schools into the into the female android, oh, so she can geez. cook. Without complaining, she can cook the very best for her mass massa, her owner. Oh my gosh. And then you have another android and you, you, you make them a black belt in every possible martial arts to be your bodyguard. So you have a bodyguard just like a like a ninja or something or a Shaolin ninja bodyguard yeah you have one Android for that you have one Android for the bedroom and you have a third Android to uh, go to work for you and then as far as the butler duties they can all do that Britons sometimes make fun of the French for feasting on frogs they make fun of more things than that. I, I've known some English businessmen that said that they cannot stand the French for certain reasons. But now, <coughs> a new discovery suggests their prehistoric ancestors may have had a taste for toad. Venomous. Those, those warts on their skin squirt uh, a venom, just like a salamander. The University of Buckingham said a promising excavation near Stonehenge has unearthed a host of clues about the diet of prehistoric Britons. Among them, a tiny, partially burnt leg bone which suggests, suggests the hunter-gatherers living in what's now known as the United Kingdom, snacked on amphibians. Well, the Duck Dynasty loved, uh, Jace loves uh, frogs. Yeah, but all those poor frogs in wheelchairs, sad. Oh, that's in France. Yeah. <laughs> it's like crawfish, I mean, I can't. They're into crawfish, but it's a lot of work taking the meat Sucking out. Sucking out the head? There's a lot of work. It, it's tedious. It's like it's it's like eating. What about shucking it's clams? Like, it's like opening up sunflower seeds. What it's about just, shucking clams? Well, I don't. Sh you can buy raw sunflower seeds, you know. As long as somebody else shucks them, I guess. The charred bone was found alongside the remains of fish and aurochs. Or oh, shucks. The wild ancestor of today's cattle. Yeah, uh, uh, Great Britain was also the home of a dinosaur called Iguanodon, which is herbivorous, harmless. At a site called Blickmead in the town of Amesbury, about 85 miles west of London. Simon Parfit researcher at the Natural History Museum and University College London said the dig had provided experts a glimpse of Mesolithic menus. Now I'm not urinating, it's my tea. That also included fish, hazelnuts, berries, deer and boar. Yeah, hazelnuts. I didn't know there were, there were a lot of hazelnuts grown in, Eng in England. I like hazelnuts. He called the discovery of what appeared to be leftovers from a meal of roasted toad really intriguing. Yeah, but they're, they're venomous. Being English, we don't eat frogs, he said. The toad finding has yet to be peer-reviewed. And one expert 
Bournemouth, at Bournemouth University, archaeologist Tim Darville expressed skepticism over what he called the frog story. Still, he and, our, and other outside experts voiced excitement over the dig where the bone was found. Darville called it the most significant find in the Stonehenge landscape for many years. Stonehenge would be northern England, I believe, closer to uh, Scotland. Um, any Chris Christie articles since uh, we have a, a campaign? Chris Christie! Campaign going on? Or Barbara, Barbara Bono versus Christie? I don't know here. What, I gotta go through everything here? No, well, I'll just find something um, hard hitting. You don't have to. You don't have I to. I think everything I did was for hard hitting. No, I mean something applicable, p politically applicable. Is that all we have? Is politics? Isn't there other stuff in the world that is important? Well, unfortunately, politics is what's affecting our present state in the world. Unfortunately. You know, unless you got a climate change one, because I know, I know, uh, the Far East has been getting hit by uh, some bad typhoons, and and the Philippines had two earthquakes, over over seven points on the Richter scale, right after the typhoon. So, Are you better off now than you were four years ago? No. A 2011 survey by the Legal Services Corps found that a record number of New Jersey residents, more than two million, like 24.7 percent, are now poor. I believe it. Last year, excuse me, last year, legal services disclosed the negative effects of growing income inequality in our state. Here in my part of town, more than 30 families who dropped off donations to the local food bank a few years back are now depending on the food banks to get by. That's what happened to New Jersey under Div Governor Crisco Crispy. Crispy Cream Crisco Christie. Crisp yeah, this is, this is a good uh, reading. I like this reading. Democratic candidate Barbara Bono believes it's wrong to balance our economy on the backs of the 99%. I agree. She would restore... Ah, here's what I was trying to think of before. The earned income tax credit for the more middle class and the poor with children. They have to pay less taxes. Well, yeah, they have the burden of being a... Because wanted to get rid of it. Okay. Okay, so 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 the middle class will go further into Index. the into the poorhouse. Yeah. Which is poss possibly what they want. Yeah. So they work they'll work for slave wages maybe. Yeah. Huh, interesting. Uh, restore the earned income tax credit. Enact higher taxes on millionaires and establish fairer tax policies for everyone. Bono knows that education from preschool to college is an investment and she would fully fund public schools. If the jobs come back to the United States and they're here, yes, if uh, they will not come back. Then you can get all the certificates and degrees you want. Because they will be they will be hiring these people at lower wages. See, Barbara Bono, when she talks about putting education first, she's probably talking that way because she's a mother, she's a parent. Doesn't she realize that, <laughs> you, <laughs> you know, I mean, <clears throat> India has many, many, many college graduates, but they're living in poverty, the average citizen of India. Mm -hmm. You yeah. have you have people cleaning the friggin' streets with college degrees. I mean, 
education, if there's no job market, if there's, if there's no jobs to be had, there's no demand, you're not creating a demand. And it's a waste. Gonna be, there ain't going to be no job markets because we keep giving all the breaks to the private sector, the corporations, etc. So something else has to be, the system has to undergo change. Yeah, yeah, not a system, not a, not politics dependent on money. Not that kind of a system. But I'm I don't, talking about the job uh, yes. creation now, the, sector. The th one of the very few things that get under my skin about Democrats is they're always talking about doing the right thing for our kids, our kids. What about poor and adults that don't that have the, their children are all grown up or they don't have any kids? Did Everything's you, about the kids. The kids. Listen, the kids are too coddled today in America. Did George Bush worry about our kids when no. he spent trillions of dollars in Iraq, Afghanistan, no. Medicare Part D, no. Homeland Security, etc. All these boondoggles, wastes of money. Did he worry about our kids having to pay all those debts off? No. No. While our current governor spends much time campaigning out of the state, out of the state, Bruno would work hard every day here in New Jersey for the people. She did mention that Christie likes to travel. Well, he's got to do that if his agenda is 2016. Yeah, well, he's 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 doing it to suck up to the Republican Party, you know, and uh, he he he's gearing for 2016. That's what he's doing, even though he says his priority right now is New Jersey. He is gearing for that. It should be very interesting in 2016 with. Uh, Jesse Ventura, Howard Stern, and uh, and then and, and now Arnold Schwarzenegger has high aspirations. And uh, I mean, I don't know about Trump. I think I think he says he he's not interested. Trump. But you never know. He just gets in there as a hobby for something to do. You know. Uh, but uh, oh, there should be uh, this Tuesday. I think there'll be another debate between Joe Loda and uh, Bill De Blasio for uh, New York New City York. Mayor. Uh, I hope Bill de Blasio doesn't end up being like David Dinkins was with a hands-off policy to all the aggressive, annoying panhandlers, all the hoodlums that used to be aggressive panhandlers. He's already tarnished as a communist. And the squeegee pe Oh, communism. He's socialist. He wants to tax the rich. That's good. That's it's socialism to these people. That's it. Well, well, hey, anything that helps the little guy is 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 a, is a is a better government to me. Why the the rich should not pay their fair share in taxes? Who cares what they like and what they don't like? See, De Blasio, uh, he instead of coming back at Loda with toughness like uh, Barbara Bono did to Chris Christie. He says things like, "Oh, uh, New Yorkers are tough. New Yorkers uh, uh, have got York. have gotten through every crisis. We're we're, we're too big for the. How come they? This is the flaw of Democrats. They don't want to really fight their their opponent, the conservative forces of evil. They do mm. not want to fight toe and toe, toe to toe with them, tooth and nail." They want to be nice, and they want to show that they're better than the Republicans, and they want to negotiate, and 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 this this kind of approach, this uh, Dr. Phil approach, is not going to work with these wicked conservatives. It's not going to work. The seventy-two-year-old hunter. Hunter. Who was <clears throat> who was who was lost for more than two weeks in California forest, survived by eating squirrels and other animals he shot with his rifle. Did he cook them? 
and by making fires and packing leaves and grasses around his body to stay warm. Well, he, would ha he wouldn't have to pack leaves if he uh, made a big enough fire. Jean Penaflor of San Francisco was found Saturday in Mendocino National Forest by other hunters who carried him to safety on a makeshift stretcher. The Mendocino County Sheriff's Office said Penaflor disappeared after heading out with a partner during the first week of deer hunting season in the rugged mountains of Northern California. And they separated. In the, in, in a the, trip he takes annually. Uh, he's lucky the mountain lions uh, or grizzlies, whatever, didn't get him. Probably because of the fire that he maintained. Uh, and he had a rifle. Only seven bullets. Oh, Make gosh. I won't tell you here, but I just know the story. Gotta bring a bow with you, compound bow. The forest is about 160 miles north of San Francisco. Yeah, this this this, mount, this cougar's up there. That's far enough. Cougars? Yeah. You mean older women who prey on younger men? No, not them. Oh. Not John Cooler, Cougar, Mellencamp, whatever his silly name. Melonhead? Melonhead. Yeah. No, no, mountain lion, puma. Oh. Okay. Or puma. Puma. So. A published report says we have to move on, you know. I know that. There's a lot to be put in. Yes. Here. The National Security Agency has collected millions of contact lists from personal email and instant messaging accounts around the world, including those of Americans. In its effort to find links to terrorism or other criminal activity, the Washington Post said late Monday it learned about the effort from secret documents provided by NSA leaker Edward Snowden and confirmed by senior intelligence officials. The Post says the spy agency intercepts hundreds of thousands of email address books every day from private accounts on Yahoo, Gmail, Facebook, and Hotmail. The NSA also collects about a half a million buddy lists daily from chat services and ordinary Americans. Might I add, innocent Americans. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And that should do it. Should do it. Thank you. You know, not one funny thing was uttered today, <gasps> which I think is the first for us. So Maybe he, he didn't was, get to hear the levity bells. Maybe everything was too funny. It was so funny so that... So funny it was... Because it was, it was reality. You know? Oh, you mean like... Like... Like something that is so bizarre and and stupid and unbelievable that it's it's hilarious but it's sad at the same time because it's real because it's real yeah anyway that's what the levity bells sound like if you would have heard them well you did hear them oh here here's a um a question for you you know that that silly um question that comes up every once in a, in a big while that if a tree falls in a forest and nobody's there to hear it, commercial. does it make a sound? Yes. Yeah, of course it makes a sound. It doesn't make a sound if there's no creature there to hear you it. interpret it. To but hear it. It still makes a sound. No, it doesn't. In the order sound to, is independent in of or, hearing it. Dear, I'm uh, dear. Uh, Jesus. Bill, in order to he, in order to have a sound, you must hear a sound. Correct. If there's no entity, if there's no creature there to hear the sound, but then the there's sound, no sound. The falling of the tree makes a sound. You mean the way the, the sound The way stars in the heaven make sounds. They sing and tingle and tangle and tuco and what? <laughs> yeah, but there's nobody to hear this. But it still goes on. 
this uh, saying came about from the self-centeredness of man who has to be in the middle of everything or it doesn't mean anything you know hey I got news for man things go on in the world and outer space without him being there to interpret it there are millions or billions of galaxies you know when they pointed the Hubble telescope at nothing the light came back later on and showed there are many galaxies that many there's billions and of, billions of galaxies so the, his name so the that? arrogance of man and by the way that that show on the history channel ancient aliens you know with von Deineck and everything they have different programs and let me tell you something they mentioned the ancient Sumerians with their um, uh, Cuneiform the, the, the cuneiform on the on the clay tablets and the and the Anunnaki who came from the sky, and uh, you know they looked at them as gods. Who's to say the Anunnaki were not extraterrestrials? Uh, I will say that. Who's to say that the different races of the planet Earth were not planted here from other worlds? I will say that. Uh, you know, Why is it so easy? Nobody can prove that their God existed, though. Why is it so easy for people to believe those uh, tales when it's so hard to believe what's in the Bible? Yeah, why is that? Why is that? Why, why... Isn't that a more fascinating story? Why do, why do the most retarded, asinine, idiotic... Uh, videos on YouTube get uh, go viral and get uh, hundreds of thousands if not millions of hits and important educational videos don't sometimes they don't get much of any same people, thing people do not like to learn I know a lot of young ladies that let's say are they go to school for nursing, phlebotomists, dialysis, well, the teach, the teachers, you know, all of this stuff. The teachers okay? don't make learning fun. But they don't want to learn. They do it because they feel they have to. They got to take a test, this, that, and the other thing. Of course. They but it's not course. because they want to learn and become the best nurse they can be or stuff of that nature. Or they might People choose, are lazy. or they might choose a, a course simply because it's in high demand, supposedly in high demand, and they do it because for economic reasons, and it's it's really boring, but they do it because they have to, as opposed to somebody who takes a course in something they've always dreamed about yeah. doing their whole life, like for instance, an animal lover who always wanted to be a veterinarian, etc., etc. It goes on and on and on. Uh, professional athlete, let's say a, a baseball player, kid, kids in Little League, oh, he, well, wants to go to the major leagues. Own skill. And you, you, you apply yourself 100% focus in, in perfecting your craft. Yeah. Could be an artist, could be anybody. But to do something that you really do not have your heart and soul into, you know, and that's probably why people do not select educational videos and programs to watch. That's why I would never again put our sh our radio show in the genre of education. Oh, that frightens people. And, and not only that, I do not know why that the Pirate Radio Network puts religion and politics underneath a soapbox genre. Ra ranting, Opinions. religion, and politics is under the soapbox genre. Yeah. Now, soapbox is not very complimentary. No. It's almost like saying like a whiner. And of course today, we don't even honor the soapbox. I mean, today, with no, Citizens United decision from the Supreme Court, he who has the money, he gets the biggest soapbox. The blowhorn, the soapbox. Big, big, yeah. big blowhorn. So I, I just put our shows under under Simply Talk Radio. 
because if it's under soapbox or education, not going to look at it. No, nobody's going to look at it because they're not going to look. They're going to look at the word and they're going to think of either unimportant or boring. Now, if you could put it under porn, that would be better. Well, there is an adult. <laughs> there is an adult section. Section genre, actually, but we're not like. You know, that's not what we do, but we can do that if we want to. We can talk about sexuality and porn for a whole entire show, but we don't. Well, why, why do if we? If you look at the first why page. Why don't we? I don't know. If you look at the first page of the newsletter, it says quite clearly adult material. Well, you have to be an adult to understand newsletter censors. Not that it's a well, yeah, not yeah. that it's a sexuality uh, newsletter. Yeah, you can't have one well, your brain tied, you know, behind your back like Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, you can't under, you can't be a, a conservative. You have your brain tied behind your back and, and understand this newsletter. You, you know? have to be an, an, a very very smart, progressive human being to be able to understand newsletter censors. You know, but uh, eh. But it's a thought. I mean, we all know sex sells, so, Whoa. you know, if, if we decided to do... We even got local car dealers putting chicks on their commercials to sell yeah, their stinky cars. Uh, liquor? Nah, yeah, but you see the big ones do that, but not... Listen. Not guy, uh, whatchamacallit, in Totowa. Liquor store, liquor stores... Liquor companies, beer commercials, they always have used chicks, hot looking on chicks. Cable, yeah, on cable. And and so do, do car dealers, but not as much as booze. They always use the hottest girls. Rogan Cadillac, come on down and buy a CRX or what but they didn't you, have a chick. But if you go to a car show, you see the, the hot looking swimsuit oh, model yeah, looking girl. Cars, yeah. Like like a Carol from uh, uh, um uh the, the price is right you know the, the the girls from the price is right you know they put they 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 run their fingers up and down the car and smile you know they always use girls like that yeah, so that's you know but anyway. not Ray Katina and even trucks she's standing in front of trucks too with the short squirt well if, if you want to see if you want to see <laughs> the most risque scantily clad women watch the the Latin Stations. Oh yeah! Watch, Watch the, Latin. the Latin weather girls. Yeah, the news. Yeah. They all have large breasts and cleavage. Uh, all of them, as opposed to the uh, flat-chested um, American media. Hey, don't insult Michelle Powers of New Jersey Twelve. What about that f that fat Janine Scrofafi? Scru what does it? Uh, yeah, but she's a she's a she's an announcer, right? Yeah, but she's yeah, fat. She's not a weather girl. Oh, she's chubby. She's fat. Now, Ginger, 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 uh, Ginger Lynn, Gin, Ginger Z, yeah. Amy Freeze on Channel Seven. Amy, Amy Freeze. Freeze. <laughs> she's a weather girl. Yeah, she wears a nice dress too. Oh, speaking of weather people, if you're living, if you're, if you're, if you're a viewer, uh, a fan of ours that live in the New York metropolitan area, which we are from. I want you to notice something about CBS's uh, Mr. Wait, no, he's not on CBS. PIX. Channel WPIX 11. Channel 11, Mr. Mr. G. Mr. G. He always, always stands right in front of Monday's forecast. You know when they have the whole yeah, seven day, seven five days. or seven day forecast, it appears? He stands in front of Monday, completely blocking Monday. And he's uh, he, he works out and everything, so he's oh he does big. oh you're right. Mr. Why, G, you can't see the way he wears his suits, Mr. G. Yeah, an old geezer like that. I didn't know that he was. He's got he, shoulders and chest. I didn't know man. he was athletic, but he blocks Monday. <laughs> got to stand to the side, man. Turn to the side, you yeah. know. Anyway, thank you for joining us for this week's progressive discussions. I noticed that. The sun went down right away. It's been an overcast day. Yeah, it's going to be cool tonight. Oh, yeah, it's going to plummet. They say it's going to plummet. Hey, tis autumn. I don't want the winter to come. Tis autumn, but the good thing is, it's also Saturday. All right, say so long to these people. So long, people.